Amen. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful tonight for the privilege of this fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for the intentions on your heart for summoning us. Thank you for the great future that you have ordained for every participant of this program, either online or on ground. Thank you for the investment of your grace. Thank you for the promise of greatness in the future and in the purpose of God. We are grateful. Tonight, I ask that you will take over this meeting. It will fulfill your purpose in the lives of every participant. Let your word sound from here to the ends of the earth. Changing lives and transforming destiny. Let there be counsel from heaven, accurate counsel, unmistakable counsel in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will keep the feet of everyone on the path of glory, that your feet will not slip and you will not fall. Whatever has been the plan of the enemy, for distraction and deception. Let the power of God flowing from the truth tonight begin to arrest such plans. Anyone hearing from anywhere, I pray that the plan of the devil will be arrested by the revelation of the truth. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let the word which is light lighten the darkness of anyone here tonight. Let there be a floodlight of truth, a floodlight of revelation, chasing every darkness into eternal oblivion in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I pray that everyone connecting and participating in this meeting, leading light fellowship for September, I pray that your portion of leadership will not be taken over by another person. In every field of life, you will begin to prepare yourself fit for what God has ordained for you. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to this fellowship tonight. The plan of God is that he will raise the leaders of tomorrow today. Anything God is involved in, God is never overtaken by time. God is always ahead of time. Anything that God is involved in, he is never overtaken by time. He is always ahead of time. It's one of the proof that you are Walking with God. One of the proof you are walking with God is that you are never overtaken by time. You are simply ahead of time. So you would have gone ahead before the devil think of anything. That's a proof that you are walking with God. And that's a proof that you are following him. Those that are not truly following the Lord are always at a disadvantage end of time. Because most time when God is speaking, they do not hear, or they do not understand, or they are not even ready to hear anything. And every word of God is for your benefit. Every word of God that you are privileged to hear is for your benefit. The word of God is what will set the clock of our destiny. The word of God will, de will clear the future for you. The word of God will grant you accuracy as you go through life. But unfortunately, many people do not know that. So, but those that know 
they are never late. They are always ahead of time. Because God is always ahead of time. And the word of God is always ahead of time. Now, tonight, that is a teaching that continually resonates in my spirit. I have the habit of listening to the last minute to find out what exactly is resonating with my spirit that I am confident and I can conveniently say this is what the Lord is saying. Because I have come to a place by understanding and experience not just to preach but to give the voice of God. Is that okay? If it is just teaching, there are so many subjects to teach. But I just want to be an expression of the voice of God. I don't want to be a brilliant teacher or a wonderful explanator or expositor. But I just want to be an accurate oracle of God. Such that anyone that comes at any time will be satisfied in his or her spirit that he has had God. Is that okay? It is the voice of God that's going to better your life. If you read the, uh, the book of Psalm, uh, I think Psalm uh, is in 19 or 29, 29. I want you to do a thorough meditation on that. In fact, for many years, we have, I have crafted prayer points from that Psalm 29, and I'm not tired of praying it. And many times I ask you to pray it. Those of you in prayer assignment, I ask you to pray Psalm 29. Because it talks about the voice of God. And you find out that there is nothing the voice of God cannot do for you if you have it. My prayer is that your life will not be without the voice of God. Because even if you have billions in dollars, without the voice of God, it's going to amount to a waste. It's going to amount to a waste. No money can buy accuracy. Is that okay? No money can buy accuracy. Right? What people will lose because of the mistakes of inaccuracy, money will not be able to secure it for them. So when people are looking for money, you just be looking for the voice of God. Is that okay? The voice of God in any area of your life. Before you get married, get the voice of God. Before you get into any business, get the voice of God. Before you do any, get the voice of God. Don't go to a church where the voice of God is not heard regularly. It would be a waste of time. You don't go to a church just to, to solidarize with anybody. You are going to a church because of your destiny. And the only thing that can supply your destiny and make it beautiful is the voice of God. I'd rather die than to live without the voice of God. And I want to pray for you that you will always have the benefit and the privilege of the voice of God. In the name of Jesus. Nobody knows what to do until God has spoken. So my desire is not just to come and teach. Wonderful teaching, whatever. I just want to be an expression of the voice of God. I want to be sure that I'm hearing God. So tonight, I want to share with you briefly on what I call the power of examples. The power of examples. The power of examples. Now, I'd like you to write this scripture. I'm going to come back to them after sharing about six or seven points with you. The power of examples. Number one, nobody can truly fulfill his or her destiny without understanding the power of example. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody can truly fulfill his or her destiny without understanding the power of example. Either you are going to preserve the purity of your destiny or you are going to allow the devil to pervert it. God forbid you cannot expect escape the critical influence of example in your life. 
Is that okay? As you are here, as you are seated, you are, you are, you are following an example. Either consciously or unconsciously. Everybody you see in the world is following an example. Everybody you see in the world is either directly or indirectly submitting to an influence. Submitting to an influence. You may know it, you may not know it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The way you behave and your manifestation is a function of the influence you submit to, either directly or indirectly, either consciously or unconsciously. Are you getting what I'm saying now? But it's better for you to be conscious of the kind of influence you should submit your life to. It's better for you to be, to be conscious of the kind of example you will follow. Of the kind of example that you allow to influence you. As a pastor of uh, 28 years pastoring and pastoral experience, I have come to realize that we must never assume that because people are in church that they will automatically follow the right examples in life. I, have, I will never fall for the trap of that assumption. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That somebody is in church doesn't mean he's going to follow right examples in life. Some people in church are following ungodly examples, even though they hear the word of God regularly. When you look at the product of their life, compared with the truth that they are listening to, you can decide either they are following the right examples or wrong examples. I pastor people that are following wrong examples in life. And yet they come to church. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So when I see the manifestations of their life, to their own detriment, it is a proof of the examples they are following. Are you hearing me now? Now, when you follow an example, you open your spirit to that example. You open your spirit to that example. And once you open your spirit to that example, the influence of that example takes your life over. And God help you if it's a godly example. You will see the influence of the Holy Ghost take over your life. And God save you if it's a wrong example. If it's a demonic example. Many people are in church, but they are under demonic influence. Did you get what I'm saying now? They are under demonic because, because of what they open their life to. If everybody that is coming to church is opening their life to the influence of the word that is coming and the godly example that God places before people, the lives of many people will never be out of order. Are you hearing me now? When you see somebody in a church that, is, that God has called the pastor, anointed him, he has a godly marriage. Solid godly marriage. Following Jesus. And then you have couples in that church that they always have problems with their marriage. Always problem, always fight. Always problem. I don't need any prophet to tell me that they are just there. They are not following good examples. Hello, somebody. I don't need anybody to tell me. As a pastor of 28 years standing, nobody can deceive me with face. I look at the flows in your life. Are you hearing me now? Because sometimes when you have a child that does not look like the father, that doesn't look like the mother, then the paternity of that boy or girl will be under dispute. Yes or no? There are many things that are easy to get if we do not want to deceive ourselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So it's possible to have a godly example in front of you and you never open your spirit to that. And then by the time we see your manifestation, we can know that this one you are not following correctly. This one is not following a godly example. This is not. When you see the product of a godly influence, won't you know? I'm asking you, would you know? The Bible says, by their fruit, ye shall what? Ye shall know them. When you see the product of a godly influence, you will know. You will know. You will see the life. It's clear. But that people who are coming to church doesn't mean they are going to follow right examples in life. 
I've seen people like that come to church for years, yet he's not opening his life to right influence, right example. It's not. You just see the manifestation of his life. Things are always wrong. The more he hears the word of God, the, the more, the worse he becomes in manifestation. That is telling he's not following. He may be the first to come to church. He may be regular in attendance, but he's not following a godly example. So we must never assume that because people are in church, they will, they will automatically follow the right examples in life. I've seen people following bad examples in a good church. In a good church, you know, you, you know, you know in a good church we have, we have bad people. Hello? So, which, which kind of people are you following in a good church? That determines your manifestation. Brethren, we must never take for granted that people will follow or or be influenced by what is right. We must never take for granted what people follow or we leave it to common sense. Can I tell you this, beloved? The best of men will naturally follow the wrong example. Write it in capital letters. The best of men will naturally, naturally follow the wrong example because the pool of rebellion is strong upon the nature of man. That's why the Bible says, all have sinned and have what? Come short of the glory of God. It's easier to follow wrong example for normal, natural people. That's why the Holy Ghost compelled my spirit to teach this because we must not assume that people would normally follow right example. No, no, no. People don't naturally follow right example. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If you place a Jesus down and you place a Barabbas down, you will discover that Barabbas is going to have more followers than Jesus. Yes or no? Because the best of men will naturally follow wrong, ungodly, unrighteous, demonic examples. Because of the nature of sin. If you put Jesus on Facebook today and you put Barabbas on Facebook today, now who do you think would naturally have more followers? Huh? Barabbas will have more followers. Because this is a demonic world. This is a world of sin. And a lot of people are under the bondage of sin. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, but as we teach this along uh, today, as a leading light in your generation, if you are going to keep, if you are going to be consistent in that status, as a leading light, you must be seriously conscious of the kind of example you are following. Because the power of your manifestation is a function of the example you are following. It's a function of the influence you open your spirit to. Is that okay? The devil, you can't do much more than the examples you are following. You cannot become better. You are only going to, you know, you are only going to become what you are following. And that's why as a leading light. Do we have a leading light here today? You believe you are a leading light in your generation. Let me see your hand. You are, you are a leading light in your generation. Okay, I'm talking to the right people. So, you must be very conscious and careful of the kind of example you are following. Your personal example. Your marital example. Your business example. Who is influencing you in marriage? Who is influencing you in business? Who is influencing you in ministry? Who is influencing you in service? Who is influencing you in everything? You must be cautious. And you must be careful to retain your heritage of a leading light in your generation. High flyers, they follow right example. They follow godly example. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You can't be following the example of a wonderful anointed marriage and your marriage will not improve. 
It's not possible. You can't be following right examples and your life will be going down the wrong lane. So the first truth I'd like you to know is that nobody can fulfill his or her destiny without understanding the power of what? Of examples. Is that okay? Very, very important. Number two, when God gives you a life and a destiny, he has also assigned to you your destiny examples. Is that okay? You should not discover it. You are not going to, you are not, you are not, you are, you are not the one. If, if God gives you a life and he gives you a destiny, he has also assigned for you your destiny example. So you must discover who your destiny examples are. The same way you discover what your destiny is. Is that okay? They go together. God gives you a life. He ordained a destiny for you. And then he, he also assigned to you destiny examples. That's going to help you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Very, very important. My prayer is that you will not miss your destiny examples. You will always design them. You will always be accurate in knowing them. Are you hearing me now? Very, very important. So, as you seek to discover your destiny, you must also seek to discover your God-ordained example that will connect you to the influence required to drive your destiny to its fulfillment. Critical things of destiny are not monetary. They are spiritual. Is somebody hearing me now? So, as you seek to discover your destiny, you must also seek to discover your God-ordained example that will connect you to the influence required to drive your destiny to its fulfillment. There is an influence that would be needed to drive your destiny to its fulfillment. That influence is spiritual in nature. That influence can be divine or it can be demonic if you get it wrong. A great destiny under a demonic influence is a great catastrophe. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I've seen people that they, they didn't turn out to fulfill God's purpose for their life. Or at best, their manifestation was perverted. It's not as God ordained it. But even in their state of perversion, you will know that they have a great what? Destiny. That, that is a, we were sharing, I was sharing with some men of God one time and then we identify a particular man who originally carried an apostolic destiny. Because since he has died, the organization he founded in the name of a church is just expanding. You will never say that that man has no calling in the ordination of God. He does not only have a calling, he has a very great calling, apostolic calling. Even though the church that he left behind is a perverted church. Are you hearing me now? A church that is not in line with the word of God. But they keep expanding. They keep expanding. They keep spreading their influence. 
even after the man had died many years now. Nobody will say that that man didn't carry a great destiny. He carried a great destiny. Unfortunately, the destiny submitted to a wrong influence. And the result is perversion. I have seen many people that are in their state of perversion. Running errand for the devil. But yet, you will know that by all standard, they have a great destiny. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? They have a what? A great destiny. But unfortunately, that destiny was submitted to a wrong what? Influence. That's the power of example. I hope you are following me now. I hope you follow me. Once you get your examples wrong, even if you have discovered your God-ordained beautiful destiny, you will never be able to fulfill it. A beautiful destiny under a wrong influence is a major disaster. Write it down. Don't forget it. A beautiful destiny under a wrong influence is a major disaster. And that's why you have to be very cautious and conscious of the kind of example you are following. Make a personal evaluation of the example you are following. Either intentionally or unintentionally. What influence do you allow to influence you? <laughs> Did you get what I'm saying now? Check yourself regularly. Pause and stop. Find out. As it is today, what example am I following? What influence have I opened my life to? And many of us will need to do a course correction along the line. If we are going to be accurate in our destiny manifestation. So the second point, which is very critical, is that when God gives you a life and a destiny, he has also assigned to you your destiny examples. So as you seek to discover your destiny, you must also seek to discover your God-ordained example. Because it is that God or an example that will connect you to the influence required to drive your destiny to its fulfillment. Is that okay? Are you with me now? How many of you have seen people singing for the devil, as it were? That you are sure in your heart that they have great talent of singing. How many of you have seen people like that? Is it everybody that is singing that has beautiful talent that align that talent with the purpose of God? Talk to me. Have you had people that you know is in serious perversion but that has great talent but is using that talent to service the purpose of the flesh, service the purpose of the devil? What do you think happened to them? They had a great destiny, but their destiny is under a wrong influence. And it becomes a major disaster. That's why I said, a beautiful destiny under a wrong example or a wrong influence is a major disaster. There is a man that I don't want to mention him because we're on air. But if you follow me very well, you will know the man. All the music of that man are prophetic. In fact, 80% of his music, especially the one he sang about Nigeria, are prophetic. Some of the things that are happening now, are you hearing me now? <laughs> he had sang it in his music in the 70s. 
The man lived a very crazy life. Smoking Indian hem and all that. But he was a very powerful musician in the world. He still has a, he still has, he was so powerful that his music ministry or music business continued even after he had died. He had a lot of exam, a lot of uh, followers. He had a shrine in Lagos. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Praise God. Some of the, some of the song he sang, especially about Nigeria, oppression, lack of good governance and all that, economic problem, and where the nation is today, are prophetic that he has sung in the 70s. And it is still accurate in 2022. I don't need anybody to tell me that that man carries a prophetic destiny. Hello. Even if he wasn't standing behind the pulpit, if he was singing gospel music, he would have been prophetic. Not to talk of he has a prophetic destiny, but submitted to a wrong example, a wrong influence, he becomes a major disaster. He dances naked when he was alive. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And he smokes his Indian hem openly. <laughs> he told a court one time that it's a vegetable for him. That it's a vegetable for him. Just like you cook your vegetable and all that. That his Indian hem is a vegetable for him. And nobody should prosecute him for that. I can go on and on in different areas of life, of people with great destiny submitted to a wrong influence. If the influence over your life is wrong, you are not going anywhere to happen for God. And that's why you have to be very careful and check your influence. What kind of influence do you open your spirit to? Is it demonic? Is it divine? What, what example are you following? Directly or indirectly? Consciously or unconsciously? Are you hearing me now? Number three. The Bible and life are full of different types of example that can influence your life and destiny. The Bible and life generally are full of different types of examples that can influence your life and can influence your destiny. But you must understand that the examples you submit to follow or the examples you allow to influence you is the picture of your manifestation. Either good or bad. Is that okay? You can, you can be better than the example you follow. Provided that example is good. And if the example is bad, you will be better in bad things. Because everybody following something has the capacity to be greater than what they are following. Either good or what? Or bad. So you must intentionally, when you get to anywhere, be selective in the influence you submit your spirit to. For example, when you get to a church, watch very well and look at the best example of godliness that is there. 
and follow. Open your life to such influence. You will get the best of God. But if you get to church and you open your life to the bad influence in that church, you won't get the best of God. I've said it over many years. If you follow, when you get to a church and the, the, the example you allow to influence you is a wrong example. Somebody who is always late or somebody who doesn't even come to church. You will just discover that no matter the love you have for God before, you begin to drop back, begin to drop back, begin to drop back. When people are drawing back, they are not following the right example. Is somebody hearing me now? They are not submitting to right influence. If somebody is not capable of doing what is right, go and check it. He is following a wrong example. So you must be careful. I use church as an example because that's a clear example and easiest example that come to me now. The same principle in society, your place of work and every other place you find yourself. Look for the godly example in that place and follow. Are you following what I'm saying now? Did you get that? So, always look for the good example, not the bad example. And choose to be influenced by the good example that God brings to you or that God brings you to. Alright? Always develop appetite to emulate good example. Because that's what you're going to become. Eventually, eventually. Number four. The pattern of God for helping men to fulfill their destinies. And that pattern is established in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. That pattern is that God is going to put a godly example in front of them. In form of an authority figure. That's the pattern of God for helping men to fulfill their destiny. And you can see that pattern throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. When God wants to help you to become what He has ordained for you to become, what He does is He just places a godly example in front of you. You do hear what I say now. He just plays what? A godly example in front of you. That is one of the critical ways of divine help. So you are now left with your ability to open your eyes, open your ears, and follow. Nobody will say God did it happen. I have seen people that ended up in a very terrible, painful way that I didn't like personally as a pastor. But I sat down and looked at all through their lives. I discovered that God was too good for them by placing godly example in front of them. But they rejected that godly example. Hello, somebody. Are you with me now? I've seen that happen in my journey and interaction with people. I'm praying for you, you will not end with regret. And I'm praying for you, you are not going to waste the investment of a godly example in front of you. There is no time when God wants to help somebody. He places a godly example in front of you. He gives you that benefit. But most people that had a negative manifestation or that ended wrongly, 
they never took advantage of that help of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. They never took advantage of that help of God. And the devil took over. The devil took over. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? Praise God. So something happened sometimes. And then I was just thinking. Why, why, why did this happen? Why did this person have to end this way? Why did this person have to end this way? Why did this person have to end this way? Why did this person have to end this way? And the Holy Ghost gave me one English. I'm believing I will remember that English now because I told, I think I told mommy that English. What, can you please remind me? Huh? They, they spawn. Spawn. The Holy Ghost, I was just thinking, ah, why did it happen? Why, 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 why does this person have to end this way? Why? why? And the Holy Ghost said, naturally, emotion would have taken over. But I was just asking God, God was good, God was fair, God is kind. God is loving. Yes or no? And the Holy Ghost said, the person you are praying about spawned my provision. And I, I never had, I've not had that kind of English before. So I went to the dictionary. And I checked the dictionary. The vivid or graphic meaning of spawn is when something is placed in front of you and you use your leg to just push it away. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? The Lord said, the person ended up that way because he spawned my grace. My prayer for you is that you will not spawn the grace of God. Every time, God always places a righteous example in front of you. A picture of a right thing to do. Either in business, in marriage, in academics, in life, in church. And you just see when God wants to help a man, he just places an example in front of him. I've always had privilege of speaking to pastors and I tell people, I tell pastors especially, that God didn't just put us in front of people to speak grammar. One of the, one of the demand of a pastoral ministry is that you must pay the price as a pastor to be a godly example in front of God's people all the time. When I see people struggling to be a pastor today, I see there are foolish people who do not know the price and the demand of a pastor. Because what our generation know about pastoring is, is like a chieftaincy title. Now everybody, everybody, everybody now, they, say they honor me with the title of a pastor. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Authentic pastors don't just come before the people and speak grammar and deliver a speech. They are godly examples that God placed in front of people. So if a correct pastor is standing in front of people and is teaching the word of God, there must be nothing in his life that, we, that must contradict his revelation. Hello, somebody. Everybody in the church, beyond the message he's teaching, must be able to see the godly example of his life. That's that's what it means to be a pastor. So God doesn't just place pastor in front of the church to speak grammar or to deliver a speech. God places pastor in front of the church to mirror godly example. 
if you attend a good church, one of the factors of a good church is that the life of your pastor will be a godly example you can safely follow. Is somebody hearing me now? You will be able to pray, Lord, let my life be like this. Let my life be like this. The life will challenge you. You will see, you will see an agreement between what he preaches and the kind of life he lives. That is one proof of a great church. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Very, very important. And let me say, don't, even, don't stay in a church where you can't follow the example of the pastor of that church. We were praying in a place three days ago and somebody said, if you look at some of these pastors, he said, by the time you get close to them, you cannot use their life to pray and say, God, let my life be like this one. And I said, them, but why, why are you staying there? <laughs> Don't be an emotional member when your destiny is wasting away. Are you hearing me now? Don't attend a church where the pastor cannot be a godly example to you. It doesn't matter the Bible school he went to and the Bible knowledge that he has. Once he fails in the example price, he's not a pastor. Are you with me? He's not a pastor. Paul the apostle said, follow me as I what? As I follow Christ. That's the price to be a pastor and to stand before God's people. The pulpit is not a place of decoration. But because it has a prominence associated with it, everybody can see it. Everybody is struggling for pulpits now. And that's why we have we have a lot of demons on our pulpit today. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But if you attend a church where the pastor is not just a deliverer of speech or, or sermon, but his life, you can follow it. That's a great church. That's the example that God is placing in front of you. You will never be lacking in example because God is going to bring you godly example. The issue is, will you open your eyes and will you follow the right example? That's the issue. That's the issue. You know, we finished, we finished Bible study one day. And um, uh, one young man came, before he went to school, he's a member of the church, when he came back from, I think he just spent maybe one semester in school that time. And they were on holiday, so he came to Bible study. <laughs> when he entered, I knew he had changed in his example. And so when we finished, I told mommy, I said, call that young man and, and talk to him. Talk to him. He doesn't need to tell me. I know something has changed in school. Did you hear what I said? I know, no matter how people pretend, you will always know you will always know that something as what as they, they are following, what they are following is different. He had the crazy cut on his head and then mommy called him after the service and said, how are you? High school? He said, school is good. Okay. Who is now your pastor? That was the question. Very simple question. And he said, ah. Daddy, of course, is my pastor. He's my father. And mommy said, no, 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 no. It's not your father. He said, yeah, it's my father. It's my father. <laughs> when did you see this kind of hair cut on his head? Did you hear what I'm saying? There is nothing wrong that somebody, if anybody is doing what is wrong, he has seen it somewhere. Hello? He has what? Seen it somewhere. 
And the fact that he's able to now do it shows that he has opened his spirit to that influence. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. Very, very important, beloved. So the, when God wants to help you, he puts a godly example in front of you. Number five. The example God places before his people are those that he has done a work in them. And he expects his people to follow or imitate the man he has approved. Don't follow the example of a man that is not approved of God. Live your life in such a way that God will work on your life and you will become a man approved and God will place you in front of people as an example that they can follow. Is that okay? Live a life in such a way that anybody following you will know God more. Anybody following you will get better. Mommy called one man in the church one day and said, Sir, how many people do you pray to follow you the way you are doing? Can you pray that somebody should be doing what you are doing? And I listened very carefully because I just finished preaching. I was... I listen. I wanted to know. Because some people know what they are doing is wrong and they still continue to do it. Such people need, such people, God cannot even help them. But somebody who doesn't know who is sincerely wrong can be helped. But when you know what you are doing is wrong and you keep doing it, it is the road of perdition. Is that okay? The right spirit is, well, I don't know. And when somebody tells you, you embrace correction immediately and you change. But you know, but you deliberately continue to do what is wrong. Not even God can help that person. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So mommy asked him, and he said, no, that I can't pray that people should behave like him. <laughs> and mommy said, but why are you, why are you not behaving like So you, you know it, it's not right. Why are you not behaving like that? Are you hearing me now? So the example that God places in front of his people are the people that God has done a work in them and God expects people to follow or imitate them because they are the people that God has approved. Take a decision to be like that from now. That in that your school you will be a lady that God has approved. Is somebody hearing me now? That you will la allow God to work so much on your life that God can place you in front of people as an example. Because he approved your life. And people can say, I have no regret following your example. Number six. Wrong examples are always very loud. And they always project themselves in your face. Wrong examples are always very loud. And they always project themselves in your face. What you do is you must ignore them by all means. No matter how popular, how overbearing, or how influential they may be. The devil is very loud and noisy. 
Once you allow them to influence you, they will pervert you and take your life to a demonic destination. So everywhere you get down to, you must be able to discern between wrong example, wrong influence, and, and godly influence. That, a, that an example is good doesn't mean godly. So don't forget it. It must be good, it must be godly. Good and godly. Good and godly. Good and godly example. But every wrong example in a place are always very loud. And they always project themselves in your face. And unsuspecting people will simply fall for their influence. Because they seem to be so loud and overbearing. But if you know where you are going, and you know the future that God has observed for you, you must ignore them. That you travel to America doesn't mean that you should be, do everything they do in America. America is not heaven. Are you with me now? America is not heaven. UK is not heaven. It's not paradise. Terrible sinners are there. Terrible spirits, terrible influence, demonic, first class demonic influence are there. So that you travel to Europe doesn't mean that you have to behave or be, do everything they do there. Daniel was in Babylon, but he never followed the ungodly example of Babylon. Some of you that it is in your in, it is in the plan of God for you to travel out. By the time you travel out, the next one year, two years, what kind of a person will you be? We shall see. Did you hear? Which has I've seen people travel out. That after six months, one year, two years, their manifestation is regret regretful. Somebody was traveling one day and I, and I sat him down. I said, if you misbehave over there, it won't be a surprise to me. Are you hearing me now? He said, it's not going to be a surprise to me if you misbehave. But the only thing that will be a surprise to me is if you do well. If you behave well. If you manifest Christian virtues that I have taught you over the years, that would be a surprise to me. <laughs> but if you misbehave, it's not going to be a surprise to me. And some of you will travel. That I know. Are you hearing me now? When you get there, would you submit to the ungodly influence there? Would you forget the godly background where you are coming from? Is it a reflection of civilization to be ungodly? I'm asking you. Huh? Or demonic perversion? Any civilization that is not a reflection of godliness is from the devil. And when you get to where God is taking you to, be very careful the kind of example you submit your life to. Because I've seen it over and over. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very, very important. Now I want you to write this down. No, I'll just give you little advantages of godly examples. Or let me say The real power of example. Let me give you about seven power. So you can now place it. If it is godly, you will know that it's going to be. If it is a right example, you know it's going to be godly powers. If it is a wrong example, you know it's going to be demonic. Is that okay? So, number one. The example you follow is a deciding factor in whether you will fulfill your destiny or not. 
That's how powerful the example is. The example you follow is a deciding factor of whether you will fulfill your destiny or not. Whether you will end well or you will not end well. Whether you will do well or you will not do well. Number two. The example you follow determines the force or the spirit going with you in life. Determine the force or the spirit going with you in life. Is that okay? You want divine force to go with you? You want the spirit of the kingdom to go with you in life? Follow godly example. Is that okay? Follow godly example. Once you begin to follow godly example, divine force and the spirits of the kingdom will begin to follow you. Some people, the spirit of death follow them because of the wrong example they follow. Do you know that is what we call the spirit of death? Talk to me. Good. Some people, it is the example they follow that invited the spirit of death. Some people, the spirit of mistake and error, keep following them because of the example they are following. Some people will never, never experience divine assistance. They will always see demonic resistance. Because, no matter how much they pray and fast, people will just resist them. They won't help them. Nobody will favor them. Everything will be tough for them because of the example they follow. The example you follow, unleash a spirit of force upon your life. And this spirit and force become your permanent companion in your journey. I want the forces of heaven to follow me. The forces of favor, the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge. You know, that is the spirit of foolishness that follows people because of the wrong example they are following. How many of you are still following me tonight? You still hear what I'm saying now? The spirit of foolishness can follow people because of the wrong example they are following. The spirit of shortages. Follows people because of the example they follow. That's how powerful example the uh, example is. It determines the force or the spirit going with you in life. My prayer for you is that you will be in the company of the spirits of the kingdom in your life. You will be in the company of the spirit of God in the name of Jesus. And for that to happen, you have to follow righteous example. Is that okay? Because that example determines the spirit and the force that is going with you in life. Is that okay? I believe the Holy Spirit will explain these things deeper. Because most people don't know that many things that are spiritual goes with the example you are following. There are some examples you follow that once you begin to follow righteous example, doors will begin to open for you. Doors will begin to open for you. Doors will begin to open, doors will begin to open for you. And there are some examples that are ungodly, demonic, that doors begin to close. Doors begin to close. Doors be some people will carry the spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease because of the wrong example they are following. I pray that the Holy Ghost will take you far in this understanding. And you will save yourself a lot of pain and problem by taking decision to follow the right example. Number three, the example you follow in life determine the resources available to you. Determine what? The resources available to you. May your life not be lacking in the resources of fulfillment. Resources of grace. Resources of the spirit. They require the resources to do well. 
the required resources to become all that God wants you to become. May your life not be lacking in such resources. There are physical resources, there are financial resources, there are spiritual resources required by your life to become everything that God wants you to become. Human resources, natural resources, financial resources, they follow you because of the examples you are following. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? What I'm sharing with you is not just theory. I'm not theorizing. I'm telling you that it's a flow. I understand what I'm dealing with and what I'm sharing with you. There are things the Holy Ghost has taught me. I've passed through all of these things and I know what I'm talking about. But I want to pray for you that your life will not be lacking in the right resources. Amen. When you follow the right examples in life, it determines the resources available to you. Resources of health, resources of grace, resources of men, resources of women, resources of money, resources of counsel, resources of wisdom, resources needed by your life. Number what now? Number, this is the heart of this teaching. This is the power of example. That's what it brings into your life. And that's why you should be careful the kind of example you're following. I believe somebody is going to do something with that before we leave this place tonight. Take a decision. Henceforth. I'm not just going to submit to any nonsense or any wrong influence. I'm going to be very deliberate about the influence I'm submitting my life to. The example you follow determine the covenant you can provoke. Determines, that's number what? Number four. It determines the covenant you can provoke. When there are no covenants you can provoke that are godly in nature, causes will continue to manifest uninhibited. My prayer for you is that your life will not be a manifestation of causes. You see a lot of people that causes is just working in their life. Because they are, they are not provoking any godly covenant. Did you hear that? Don't just emulate anything because it determines the covenant you can provoke. There are righteous covenant, godly covenant, there are demonic covenant. Once you follow a demonic example, it provokes a demonic covenant in your way. Sometimes when something very strange happens that has negatively strange that has not happened to you before, it just happened. You should, be able, you should be wise enough to ask yourself, where did this come from? Uh -uh. And find out who did I flow with lately? Because cause costless shall not what? Shall not come. The possibility is that lately you may have opened your spirit to a strange influence. And then it empowers it empowers a demon that is hibernating and empower it to come up and manifest in a negative strange experience. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? So you have to be very careful. Number five. The example you follow determine the victories or the defeat you will experience. determines the victories or the defeat you will experience. My prayer is that you will always be on the victory side. In this world, there will be many battles. In fact, there are battles. But it doesn't matter the battles we are facing. May your outcome be victory all the time. I pray for you. May your outcome be victory all the time. That's with the power of example. The example you follow 
determine the victory if it's a godly example or the defeat if it is an ungodly influence. Is somebody here know what I'm saying? Number six. The example you follow determines the life you can have. The life you can have. The life you can have. There are some great life that some people can never have. No matter how much they try, no matter how much they pray, no matter how much they fast, because the example in front of them is wrong. Is that okay? One of the reasons why God places an example in front of you is to tell you that you can have a great life. Go and find out every example, great example, godly example that God places before you. God is simply telling you what I've done for that person, I can do much more for you. Is somebody hearing me now? That is what God is simply saying. I can do much more for you. And finally, the example you follow determine the eternity you can assess. Many people are in hellfire today because of a wrong example. And you know, many, many more people are in paradise today, in heaven today because of a right example. As powerful as example is, it determines the eternity you can assess. The example you follow in life will determine what happens beyond the grave. I hope somebody is hearing me. And that's why you have to be very careful. And that's why I said the power of example they do get something tonight. The power of example. Examples are very powerful. They are not just powerful in this world. They are powerful beyond the grave. I'd like you to take note of when you get back home, look through your Bible and pick a scriptural example that a Bible character that is going to be an example you will follow. There are three levels I'm sharing with you tonight. It's a personal assignment. And I want you to do it well. It's an assignment I have done personally more than 15 years ago. Look at the Bible and pick the Bible character that you are going to adopt as your personal life example. Are you with me? Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. When I did my own, I picked three personalities in the Old Testament and two personalities in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, I picked David. I picked Joseph and I picked Daniel. I studied Joseph so much that I have written a book about Joseph. I believe one day I will write about David, I will write about Daniel. But I have personal preference to study the life of Daniel, to study the life of Joseph, to study the life of David. And the, the surprising thing I have seen is that from the time I begin to specially study them, I begin to see the manifestation of their spirit upon my life. 
I don't know if you understand what I'm sharing with you. Take, for example, David. I studied David very seriously. And I discovered that. I began to see some similarities in the godly flows in the life of David in my life. The same thing Joseph. And the same thing Daniel. I'm giving you my own example. So as I open the new, the Old Testament, I have preference for David, for Joseph, for Daniel. Are you hearing me now? In the New Testament, I picked the Lord Jesus Christ. It took me time, and I'm still doing it today. There are times that I will focus on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And my focus in those books, reading them, is to look at what Jesus said, his responses to people, the power of grace in his word, his manifestation of wisdom. And then I pick Paul the Apostle. And I discover as I begin to study them with special preference, opening my spirit to them, I begin to see that the flows of their life begin to work upon my life. Look up, everybody. Somebody say first level. That is the Bible characters. You must be able to pray through and find out the Bible characters that you are going to devote your life in studying and getting something from their life so that you can leverage the power of examples in their life. The second level, I look at the believers that have finished their assignment and have gone. And I picked another three that I could pattern my life around their life. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And I read all I can lay my hands upon about them. I read their writings. I look at them, read their writings, follow their spirit, read whatever they have written that is. Are you hearing me now? And I discover that their spirit began to also walk and flow in their life. How many of you know graces don't die? Even if the carrier of that grace is dead. But the grace that he carries does not die. And how many of you know that grace is attached to you on the platform of hunger? Did you hear what I'm saying do you know somebody can be praying and shouting and shouting and shouting and shouting and it is just empty, useless religious noise. There is no hunger. There is no what? Hunger. Somebody say hunger. Talk to me. Hunger. God looks for grace attaches to hunger. When you are hungry enough for the grace of God, even in the life of somebody that has finished assignment and has gone, when you are hungry enough, that grace is going to rest upon you. Because grace does not die. It is spiritual in nature. It doesn't die. It doesn't inspire. Only God knows how many graces are hanging in the spirit looking for somebody to rest upon. But when there is no hunger, nothing is going to rest. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Amen. I studied the life of John Calvin. There is this man. I will remember his name now. He was born, I think he died May 12, 1967. That's to tell you how much I'm, I'm, I will remember his name. 
He died May 12, 1967. In fact, there was a time I had to go to the bookshop and buy every book he has written. I will remember his name now. And I study around Smith Wigglesworth. Recently, I'm doing a very serious study and listening to the teachings of Derek Prince. Derek Prince died, I think, about um, died at the age of 87, I think about maybe 12 years ago, 15 years ago. He was a prince, a principality for God in the teaching ministry. He was a giant for God. And thousands of his teachings, clips are on, on internet. I just started, I had some books of Derek Prince, but in the last three weeks, I started to really listen to his teaching. Listen to his teaching. Listen, and I see, wow, what a powerful grace that man carries. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He's dead now. He's gone to be with the Lord. But that's second level. Somebody say second level. The Lord, third level and the final level is you look for somebody who is still living. Who has not gone to be with the Lord. That's going to be an example that God is placing in front of you. All right? And many of you know my own example that is still alive. That's my father, Reverend Lushola Yodeli Areogu. Deliberately. If you read my book, Understanding Your Destiny, how many of you have read that book before? Go back and read it. I mentioned some of these things there. When I say, who is motivating you? Who inspires you? Go and read it. You find it. So it's not something that happened today. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Amen? I want you to do the same. Starting with Bible characters. Who do you want to pattern your life? Damilola Kok. You might decide to pattern your life around Deborah. Or around Esther. So what you do is you study everything about Esther, everything about Deborah. Extracting the virtues of their life, the graces of their lives. And if you are hungry enough, the same grace will begin to drop upon your life. If you are hungry enough. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. Somebody can study root. As a lady. You see what God did through them. Somebody can study Sarah. Somebody can, you know, different, different character. But I like you to do it. Take a decision. Pick the characters in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. And you're going to do a lot of study on and open your spirit to the power of their influence. If you are hungry enough. You see that same grace resting upon you. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't study, don't, don't open your spirit to the ungodly influence of Jezebel or Delilah. Then look at people that have finished their work, they have gone. Read about them. And then people that are still alive. I want you to intelligently leverage on the power of godly example for glorious earthly manifestation. Either you are aware of it or you are not aware of it. Something is driving you. Check that thing. Is it of God? If it is not of God, the destination is compromised. If it is of God, there is a great future waiting for you. Is that okay? Is that okay? Don't allow any wrong influence. Don't open your life to any wrong influence. No matter how 
powerful they are. No matter how loud they are. See that. Let me show you this scripture. I decided to take these scriptures last and do my teaching first. That's the pattern the Holy Spirit is leading me. Next month, by the grace of God, I'm going to begin to give you few examples of wrong, few wrong examples that you must avoid. And you must never, never follow such example in your life. And then I'll share some few examples of right examples that you should follow. Is somebody hearing me now? But I want you to go home today meditating on the power of examples. And make sure you are deliberate about the examples you follow anywhere you find yourself. And you know the kind of influence you open your spirit to. When anybody is doing what is wrong, don't celebrate them. Don't like it. Don't desire it. Once you begin to celebrate what is wrong, and you begin to like it, and you, and you desire it, a wrong spirit is going to jump upon you. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Don't encourage somebody who is not doing well. Are you hearing me now? Somebody who is not doing well, who is not, uh, who is not living a godly life, don't encourage him in ungodliness. Don't show by action or attitude that you support what he's doing. Frown at it. Otherwise, the negative spirit operating in his life will jump on you. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't ever support anything wrong. Whatever is wrong is wrong. Don't ever support it. Don't support it. Don't. It's popular. Everybody likes it. But if it is wrong, don't support it. But once you begin to support it, the wrong spirit will jump upon you. So you must be careful about the kind of example you follow. Is somebody here in now? Now look at this scripture as we pray. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. I'll read verses 17 and 18. Are you there? Romans chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. The Bible says, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who what? Who cause divisions and what? Offenses. Contrary to the doctrine which you learn and join them. Huh? Who has King James Version? I'm, I'm reading New King James Version. Read King James for me. Let me hear. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses. Contrary, that's the key word. Contrary to the doctrine, the teachings you are hearing. Yes? Which you have learned. Don't support them. Did you hear that? Oh, did you hear that? Don't support them. What did the Bible say? Avoid them. It is for your own good. Once you support them, internally or externally, by attitude, by whatever, you approve their behavior, their spirit will jump on you. Look at verse 18. Can you please read verse 18 for me? King James Version. For they that are such. <laughs> In fact, the, King, the New King James Version says, For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Okay, finish it. But their own belly. And by good words. And Fear speeches deceive the heart of the simple. The new Queen James Version say, and by smooth words and flattery speech, they deceive the heart of the simple. 
Is somebody here? I know what I'm saying. That is by implication a power of example. Now look at Hebrews chapter 12. First and foremost, you read verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us what? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin we so easily ensnare us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now look at verse 2. You see the power of example. Looking unto who? Unto Jesus. The what? The author and the finisher of our faith. When you look unto Jesus, the spirit of Jesus will jump on you. Looking. Somebody say looking. It is not a one-time look. It's a consistent gaze. Place Jesus in front of you. That's a power of example. Looking unto him. Looking unto him. Live your life the way he lives his life. Pattern your life the way he patterns his life. Connect to his example. And partake in his spirit. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. I hope you get a principle there that will help you. Hebrews chapter uh, and look at the same chapter 12. Let's look at verse, verse 16. The same chapter 12, verse 16. The Bible says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one muzzle of food sold his birthright. How many of you know that the spirit of Esau is upon many people in our generation? Because that, that's the example they follow. And people are selling their birthright today because of one muzzle. Hello, somebody. Hello. That's the spirit of Esau. Because people follow the example of Esau. It's what they see now, 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 that they want to get. What they see now, 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 that they want to get. Praise God. That's the times we find ourselves. Then look at... Um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Yes. Read it for me in King James. Remember them that have the rule over you, those that have the authority over you, those that are accountable for your souls. Are you hearing me now? Okay. Those that have the authority over you, those that have the rule over you, spiritual authority, pastoral authority. Yes. Who have spoken the word of God unto you? Mm -hmm. I want you to underline that word. Whose faith follow? That there lies the power of example. Whose what? Faith follow. Whose faith follow? Uh huh. Considering the outcome of their conduct. Considering the outcome of their conduct. Whose faith follow? Whose faith follow? Many people today want to follow the fashion of their pastor. They don't like to follow the faith of their pastor. They don't like to follow the teachings of their pastor. You can't carry the spirit of your pastor if you don't follow the teachings of your pastor. If you don't follow the faith of your pastor. Whose faith follow? Whose faith follow? Whose faith follow? You want to partake in godly experiences of people? You must follow their godly examples. Is somebody hearing me now? Did you hear what I say? You must follow their godly example. Right? My mother in the Lord, Reverend Mrs. Oyenika Rebun, was talk, giving her a testimony how she had a painless delivery. How she had a painless delivery. And it appears to some people that, ah, is that possible? Is that possible? Is that possible? Oh, yes, it's possible. That's the example. That's, that's a testimony she shared. Are you hearing me now? That's a testimony she shared. Alright? If she didn't experience it, she won't be sharing it. So the fact that she experienced it means it's possible to deliver without pain. 
She experienced it. She gave testimonies over time, over time, over time of what happened. That's an example. Now, if you want to follow that, you want to get that result, you must find out what was she doing to have that experience. To, ex- to have that outcome. What was she doing? Is somebody hearing me now? You find out what was she doing. Was she praying? Was she confessing the scriptures? Was she building her faith? Find out and do what she is doing. You will partake in that experience. That experience is not for her alone. Did you hear what I'm saying now? There is nothing God has done for some people that he cannot do in your life. Even greater one in your life. And since I began to study about Daniel, only God knows how many lions then God has, God has delivered me from. Real lions that are opening their mouth that even I don't know how I'm going to get over. And I discovered that God, God delivers me from them. Since I begin to study about David, only God knows how many Goliath has actually fallen in front of me. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? We can duplicate great experiences of divine moves in our days when we follow righteous, godly examples. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't convert the spiritual experiences of somebody until you find out the spiritual discipline that is batting that experiences and let that be your example. And flow with it. And flow with it. And flow with it. And you will soon begin to see that the God that was powerful on his behalf is also much, much powerful in your behalf. There is no spiritual experiences that are godly and glorious that happened even in the Bible days and in our day that cannot happen again. If we do what they do, if we follow their righteous example, we will see God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. Many times when I'm praying over my physical body, I say, God, You raise the dead now. Answer me. Has he raised the dead before? You are not dead yet. Can God walk in your physical body? Can God walk in your body such that your single body will last you for a lifetime? Are you hearing me now? How many of you have reacted against any sickness or pain in your body before? Huh? Pick an example of somebody that God walked in their life in the Bible. Find out what they do and begin to open your spirit to the righteous examples they, and you will discover what God, what God is going to do in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When Elisha got to, when he got the mantle from Elijah, when he was coming back, he get, the Jordan that they passed through, he saw how Elijah did it when they were going. Yes or no? So when he was coming back, Elijah was not there physically, but he's got the mantle of Elijah. The mantle is prophetic of the spirit of Elijah that came upon him. He could duplicate the experience of Elijah because he got the spirit of Elijah. And he said, and he rolled the mantle and beat that river and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? It was Elijah that died, but the Lord God of Elijah is still alive. And the same thing that happened, Jordan opened up for him. God is still alive. But will you follow the right thing? Will you follow righteous thing? Let's rise up on our feet. Are you blessed tonight? I am satisfied in my spirit. This is what God wants me to share with you as a leading light in your generation. We cannot take the future for granted by following wrong example. When you are following wrong example, You are taking your future for granted. You are taking your future for granted. A future not planned for, not prayed for, is a future that is not going to be realized. I want you to be very intentional with the future you are going to. Don't follow everything that people are following your day. We are living in dangerous time. Don't copy any nonsense. Because behind every bad behavior, there is a demonic spirit. Listen to me. Even air court that is controversial, don't copy it. It will bring a spirit into your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It will bring a what? A spirit into your life. In your fashion. Submit your fashion to the Holy Spirit. 
Don't copy any nonsense. Don't just copy anything. Because some of us are too fashionable that we, we do, we, 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 we just open to fashion. You must be discriminatory in your fashion sense. Is somebody hearing me now? If you have a future you are going to, and you don't want a demonic spirit to join you in that journey, you must be discriminatory, highly selective in your fashion. Because we are living in a spiritual world. Even slang, because somebody says something, they are also saying, no, 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 don't copy them. There is a spirit associated with every slang. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That is a, there was a time they said Fuji, Fuji garbage, Fuji garbage, Fuji garbage, Fuji garbage. What is, what is, what is reasonable in garbage? Garbage is rubbish. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? What they are doing now, they say, ah, it choked, it choked you, it choked you. I won't say it choked me. It choked me. How many of you have heard that now? They say, ah, it choked me, it choked me, it choked me. What is reasonable in that? What is godly in that? When it die tomorrow now, on, 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 on prematurely, unexpected, suddenly, just die because it can't breathe well. They don't know he has been saying, it choked me, it choked me over time. Ah, don't let us be stupid following this culture of the world anyhow. Don't let us be senseless. These are last days that we must know what we have. Let's follow righteousness. Is somebody hearing me now? If you don't want the experience of the world, don't follow the practice of the world. Don't be a person that is coming to church and following ungodly example in the world. What is the essence of the note you are writing in church when you are not going to follow it? We have too many religious people in our day. I told you when I was starting that somebody is in church doesn't mean he's going to follow a right example in life. The fact that you are coming to a church like this has given you a platform to follow godly example. Don't waste that resources of God. Lift up your hand to Jesus. And I want you to make a commitment tonight. I will follow righteous example. As from today, I shall embrace righteous influence. Righteous influence. Godly influence. I want you to pray any ungodly influence you are submitted to. Purge it off yourself tonight. Every wrong speech, wrong fashion, wrong culture that has brought a wrong spirit into your life. The Bible says the strangers shall fade away and they will run out of their hidden places. Ask the Lord to purge you. Ask the Lord to. If you have a future you are going to. Ask the Lord to purge you. Whatever you have picked up, directly or indirectly, that is not of God, let there be a divine purging. Let there be a divine purging. Our fashion sense will be submitted to the Holy Ghost. Our fashion sense will be submitted to the Holy Ghost. Our language and speeches will be submitted to the Holy Ghost. In any way that I have foolishly or ignorantly or unknowingly follow a wrong example or open myself to an ungodly influence oh let there be a divine purging tonight open your mouth and pray beloved let there be a divine purging a divine purging divine purging a 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 divine purging tonight the bible said the strangers shall fade away they will run out of their hidden places Everything that has polluted my destiny and my manifestation. Whatever is wrong that I pick up in the atmosphere, in the environment, among unbelievers, ungodly culture, and everything that I pick up that is, that is polluting and contaminating my spiritual, my spiritual company. That doesn't allow the spirit of the kingdom to flow with me. Let there be a divine purging today. That's why some of you have bad dreams. That's why you have bad dreams, terrible dreams, fiery dreams, because a negative spirit has joined your company. Let there be a divine purging tonight. 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 
Mosembr mosolia entre pakada malade mazai jembr mosonde limbro malabai you are not going to have appetite for anything worldly anything ungodly you are not going to have appetite for it your fashion sense will be taken over by the holy ghost every demonic fashion will no longer appear to you or appeal to you any longer in the name of jesus every wrong example every ungodly demonic example that you have followed that you have loved ah i take authority over the apology tonight whatever you like on facebook that is that there is a demonic spirit behind it let there be a disconnection from such tonight in the name of jesus let the grace of diligence the grace of sensitivity the grace of soberness and vigilance let it rest upon you may you not be forgetful of where you are going may you not be forgetful of where you are coming from in the name of jesus let the spirit of daniel rest upon you daniel was in babylon but babylon did not take him over ba daniel was in babylon but babylon didn't take him over in the name of jesus this world is worse than babylon i pray that the spirit of this world will not take you over the spirit of this world will not take you over you will not take a model out of an unrighteous person you will not take an example or a mentor out of an unrighteous person you will not desire them because once you like them you must participate in their spirit you cannot like them without participating in their spirit in the name of jesus put your two hands on your head let the anointing begin to flow upon you the anointing of diligence the anointing of sensitivity the anointing of carefulness in the name of jesus every flows that you have opened your spirit to that is ungodly either by liking by preference by hung by 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 having appetite for or by supporting directly or indirectly that has joined you to a negative flow in the spirit I decree disconnection tonight. I decree disconnection tonight. In the name of Jesus. You will be discerning of the godly example that God has placed in front of you. You will follow faithfully. You will follow consistently. You will follow totally. You will follow closely. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every negative spirit flow that has jumped upon you because of ungodly example that you have desired or that you have loved one way or the other i take authority over that flow i command a divine flushing a divine flushing a divine flushing a divine flushing in the mighty name of jesus as from today your life will come under the full control of the holy ghost you will be intentional. In the things you open your spirit to, you will be intentional. In the examples you desire, the examples you, you are hungry after, you will be intentional. May you never follow a wrong example. May you always embrace a righteous example. Godly example. Examples of discipline example of diligence in the name of Jesus. Let there be a purging and a separation of your life away from every demonic deposit. Whatever you have picked up that is negatively truncating the program of God in your life, I command today, let there be a disconnection. Your spirit will come alive. Everyone under the influence of witchcraft manipulation, I break that yoke tonight. You'll come back to yourself. You'll be fully aware. Even your fashion sense will be under the control of the Holy Ghost. Whatever will take you to the demonic world, you will not love it. You'll be selective in your life. In the character that you approve. In the conduct that you support in the fashions that you open to 
in the people that you choose to follow in any field of life, you will be so selective to discern the godly example in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that this teaching will be a law in your spirit. It will guide you and preserve you for a glorious future. Thank you, Father. We we'll give you praise. We we'll give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.